Greetings and salutations, young true believers. So today I want to talk to you about pragmatism. Um, pragmatism is often described as America's unique contribution to philosophy, right? Um, now, for my part, and I'm one of these days I'm going to get around to writing this essay, um, I maintain that philosophy or pragmatism as we understand it today began in the 18th century with David Hume. Um, it's exemplified by statements of his like, amidst all your philosophy, be still a person. Um, but what is pragmatism? So, as Bob Talitz notes in his uh, Philosophy Bites podcast that I assigned for you guys to listen to, the pragmatists don't always agree amongst themselves about you know the central tenets of the uh, the school of thought. But what they do share is this: um, we shouldn't be asking questions about you know traditional philosophical questions about essences and the ultimate nature of reality. We need to bring philosophy down, as it were, to uh, the, the, the street level. And what's that mean? Instead of asking, say, a platonic question, like, you know, does a, does a knife have the property of being sharp, right? All we need to do is ask, you know, what tangible effects can we see from using a knife, right? If you and, you know, the, the tangible effects we see is if you draw a knife along the surface of other, you know, uh, uh, su you know substances or, or objects, it's going to cut, right? Um, and that's all we need to know. We, you know, uh, we can dispense, as far as the pragmatist philosophers are concerned, with, with you know, traditional notions of truth as coherence to an external reality, right? Um we are we don't have that kind of access to reality what we have based on our limited sensory uh capabilities based on our finite intellect is a, a useful approximation of reality right so again let's dispense with truth let's talk about in the words of the great american pragmatist philosopher john dewey warranted assertability right um Let's trace our philosophical, you know, uh, assertions back to some tangible effect, right? Does the object of your belief do any heavy lifting for you? In other words, does it do work for you? Um, pragmatist philosophers often talk about the cash value of an idea. So, for example, if you are guided by a belief that... Um, you've got to be at work at eight o'clock and then it gets you out of bed at six and in your car by, you know, seven thirty at the latest and you're there on time and you're able to, you know, go about your business in, in a satisfactory manner. That's what matters. It doesn't really matter, um, whether or not it's true that, uh, you know, you're corresponding with, with the reality of eight o'clock in the morning, whatever, you cash that out as you will, um, but our thoughts should be a guide to action, not a, you know, a deep investigation into the universe um, and into, you know, the mysteries of the universe and the mysteries of reality, as it were. Uh, we should make we should make philosophy practical. Philosophy should be practical instead of asking about, you know, transcendent realms as 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 Plato would have it. Right. Or about the essences of things as they did in the Middle Ages. Let's talk about effects. Does this object of belief make a tangible difference in your life for the better. If it does, then that idea or that belief is worth holding on to, right? Now, um, in 1972, um, pragmatism fell out of favor after the death of John Dewey in, in 1951, but it came roaring back uh, in the 70s and primarily um, due or owing to the work of uh, an American philosopher named Richard Rorty. Rorty, however, is extremely controversial because he wants to dispense with any and all notions of objectivity. He thinks objectivity is pernicious. It keeps us beholden to an external, non-human other. All we need, right, is what he calls solidarity. Solidarity means you and I are part of a language community. We agree on our values, right? And um, this is something that the early philosopher, uh, early pragmatist philosopher, uh, uh, Charles Sanders Peirce, uh, 
he kind of glossed over, right? He, you know, he wanted to talk about the tangible effects of things, but, but values dropped out, right? He, he didn't think you could trace tangible effects of a value, you know, values, right? And that's where William James and John Dewey came back in and said, no, you know, value has tangible, our values have tangible effects on our lives as well. And, and Rorty agrees, right? We get in a language community, we agree on our values and we do work together. And that's what he calls solidarity. But this is where Rorty gets controversial. Um, we don't, uh, we don't have any objective moral values. There's no such thing as an objective value. There are only the values within our language community. What this way he calls a language community, uh, and what any assertions that they let us get away with, the, the assertions that they agree with, right? And then again, that's solidarity. Um, but to say, you know, it's always wrong to do X at you know any time, whatever X may be, you know, enslave people, whatever. Rorty doesn't think we can assert that. Um, he is a staunch relativist, um, not because he thinks relativism is the ideal moral situation, but because he thinks we have no alternative, right? Um, Rorty famously argues that whenever philosophers try to justify their, you know, favored moral position, they end up arguing in circles, right? So if you don't like the Nazis on, uh, Rorty's view, he didn't, you know, he wasn't a fan of Nazis. All you can do is to say, well, they're not part of the language community that I, that I get along with and I, I don't share their values, but you can't say what they did was objectively wrong. And this is why Rorty is again, so obviously controversial. And I consider myself a pragmatist philosopher, but I break with Rorty on that. Um, I don't think, you know, and this is where I am, am in keeping with say William James and, uh, uh, John Dewey. I don't think we're, we're accessing, we're, we're, we're painting, uh, a wholly accurate picture of the universe with our science because we ourselves are limited, but we're, we're painting a picture that's useful enough for us to do work to, to improve the human situation. But values on the other hand are objective because we as finite creatures depend on values for our community, for, uh, giving our life meaning and, and significance and, uh, values ultimately tend to be the guideposts by which we steer, uh, you know, in the dark, we steer our society, so to speak. Right. So we don't fall off the edges as it were. So I think objectives are, our values are objective. Um, I don't think that our science is as objective as we would like it to be. Right. As we like to think it to be, that's not to say it's not without value because it does things for us as well. It enables us to, to change our environment for the better change our situation for the better but um you know to say you know, well we're we're actually getting at the world that's that's too grand a claim for anyone to make um so again pragmatism controversial stuff but uh it is you know by and large an american contribution to philosophy and um it's certainly you know a view not the rorian view right more of a Dewey and james view is what i uh, subscribe to, um, just know again, you know, that it's controversial and it stands opposed to much of the tradition of Western philosophy.